yesterday. It was really uh, exhaust, exhausting. Um, so before we uh, start chapter 13, I want to talk about one um, question in your assignment. That uh, uh, chapter assignment, uh, question number, so the part B uh, is asking you to use the county function to uh, determine how many orders in each of the bins. So use the county function. So that's the uh, file. So we got different quantities. We, uh, we need to count how many orders uh, are between 1 and 50, how many between uh, 51 and 100. Basically, uh, let me do the first one. one We have two criteria. So it has a lower limit and an upper limit. So the function, uh, so we have two criteria. Let's use the count if as. So let's use that function. Because the count if function without as, it only allows us to enter like one, uh, one equation. So if you use count if, um, so the first criteria is. Select all the all the coordinate numbers. So we select all the coordinate numbers, and then our criteria. The first criteria is uh, uh, the number has to be greater than or uh, equal to one. So that's the uh, uh, lower limit. So the, uh, then we need the quotation so greater than or equal to one. So that's our uh, first criteria. And we need to define the other bound, the upper limit. Then still we just select all the data we have. Okay, let, let me just copy the, the selection. And, and then the second one, which second constraint is, so the value has to be less than or equal to 50. So you put all the things less than or equal to n the 50 in the quotation. So if you want to uh, directly put the number in. So that's what we have. Great. So two criteria, so you select all the uh, quality numbers, then the first criteria is if the value has to be greater then or equal to one. And then we put the second one, second criteria, we still select the bunch of all the quantities, and then the second criteria is less than or equal to two. Then it should give you the, the answer. So you do that for all the intervals, so it will uh, give you the, the correct answer. But if you do not want to directly put the number there, so there's one more thing. So instead of directly putting the number there, let's put the and let's select the, the cell number. Then we can do the same for the other one. So let's say the other one. So if you can do the Expressions are okay, so you can just put one of them, so you will be able to get it. Any questions on this uh, question? So if you have 
any additional questions on um, your assignment, please email me so I will try to uh, respond. Uh, and regarding the exams, the second exam, I think I already sent out the practice. Uh, there will be four questions, only four questions, but all of them will be Excel based. On the exam or on the On the exam, on the exam. The, 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 the practice also has four questions, and the exam will have four questions. So please make sure um, you review the Excel exercise we did in the class. So if if you are okay with uh, uh, your if you are okay with your assignment and the in class exercises, I think you should be fine in the exam. our discussion on optimization. So last chapter we were discussing the uh, linear programming. So that's the simplest uh, optimization form that we can learn. In this chapter we're gonna uh, learn a special format of linear programming or linear optim optimization. So it's called integer linear programming. So by saying integer linear programming that means in your decision variables, there are more than one decision variables that have to be integer values. So if you recall the linear, the general linear programming, we don't have a requirement on the decision variables uh, being integer or not. But in here, we have some special requirement for the decision variables. So still the, the obje objective function is to maximize or minimize your objective function. So there are a lot of uh, uh, applica applications, but before we go, go into the applications, let's be clear about some of the terms. So the first one is all integer linear programming or program. That means all your decision variables have to be uh, integer. So just like uh, in healthcare, if we wanna uh, decide how many nurses and how many doctors we have to have for each day in order to uh, minimize our operational cost. The, then the decision variables have to be integer. So three nurses, five doctors, and so on and so forth, we cannot have 4.5 nurses or 5.5 uh, 5 .5 doctors. So that's not possible. So that's one application. So all linear programs. So that's, that's a requirement for this variable. Then the next one, LP relaxation, so linear programming relaxation. So that's a, when we solve this integer linear programming, sometimes we relax the requirement or constraints on the integer uh, variable. Let's drop the uh, integer requirement. Then we can do the optimization. We, Convert it to the just general linear programming, then we have the objective function and the, and the results. Then that's the LP relaxation. The third one, mixed integer programming for mixed integer linear programming. So that means some of the variables are integer, some are not. So that's the third one. And the last one, binary integer linear programming. That means 
So in general case, in general, integer linear programming, the, uh, the descent variable, the integer descent variable can be any integer value or any non-negative uh, integer values. But in some cases, we have to model the uh, descent variables in such a way that the value can, can be zero or one. There are only two values for the integer descent variable. Either one or zero. We only have two options. So that's called binary integer linear programming. So those are the terms we uh, need to discuss. Uh, so we will cover uh, all of them in, in hopefully today's lecture. So let's see one example for the general uh, uh, integer linear programming. So this uh, is for realty. So th that company has some money to invest. So they have $2 million to purchase some properties. So they have um, a few options. After they have the, after they purchase the uh, property, they will rent the uh, run run them out to get some profit. So they have uh, two alternatives. So one is to buy a townhouse, and the other one is to buy apartments. So they have two uh, options. They can do either one of them or both. So they need to determine how many townhouses. I need to purchase how many apartment buildings I need to purchase in order to maximize and let's see if the objective function is so the objective is to maximize their profit so and there, there are some requirements so the first requirement we already discussed that so their budget is two million dollars so that's one constraint and the other one is uh, for townhouse there are only five available. So if you want to purchase six, seven, or six townhouses, I'm sorry, we only have five townhouses available uh, on the market. So that's one another country. And for purchasing townhouse, the price is 282,000 per, per house. And then uh, each apartment, the price is uh, 400,000. So that's the price for apartment. But the, there's no constraints for the number of apartment buildings to be purchased. So we do have one for the townhouse. So some of the information for this case. And then there are, there's another requirement or another constraint. So the property manager has limited time for managing the properties that uh, will be purchased. So the manager can spend up to 140 hours per month to manage those properties. So that's another constraint, 140 hours. And in order to manage one townhouse, the manager has to spend at, uh, four hours per month. And if uh, the manager wants to manage an apartment, so that person has to spend 40, or 40 hours per month. So that's another aspect of the constraint. So money is one uh, issue. So they had two, totally $2 million to, per, to make the purchase. And the, the managing hours, that's uh, the other constraint. Uh, then let's see the, the profit, uh, the cash flow. So after uh, considering all the costs and so on and so forth, the mortgage payment and so on and so forth, here are our profits. So if you buy a townhouse, so your estimated profit or cash flow is $10,000 per, per house. But if you want to uh, invest in one apartment, so that apartment building will give you $15,000 cash flow. So that's their profit. And they want to determine how many townhouses and how many apartment buildings they want to purchase. And then they want to maximize their cash flow. So they, that's a maximization problem. So let's model this, uh, this problem. So of course, two different variables. Number of townhouses to purchase, number of apartment buildings to purchase. Let's use the uh, T and A to denote the different variables, two different variables. 
And if we write the, the objective function, so as I mentioned in the previous slide, we want to maximize our cash flow or profit. So 10, so we change the unit into thousands of dollars. So, so if we look at the profit, so profit function will be 10 times the number of townhouses plus 15 times the number of apartment buildings. So that's an objective function. And then we talk about some constraints. Let's write down the constraints. Money constraints. We only totally we only have one, uh, sorry, two million dollars to invest. Then the total purchase cost has to be within our budget. So that's a that's a money constraint. The other one, the uh, the management uh, hour. So totally the management, uh, the manager has one forty hours. And then the total managing time from both alternatives have to be less than or equal to the, the capacity of the manager. And then there's one more constraint about the number of townhouses available on the market. So it says there are only five available, five townhouses available to purchase. So we have to uh, have a third constraint. So that's our model. So is our model complete here? Or do we need more things? So if you, you are the one to solve this problem, do you want to add more things or you are okay with this model? <coughs> Values. So we have to 
make those between variables integer. If we already solved the we, if we already solved the uh, LP relaxation problem. So how do we so how do we get the optimal solution? So what is the geometry of the solution or the feasible region? So if we plot the feasible region in this figure. So this uh, so the horizontal axis represents the number of townhouses, the uh, uh, vertical represents the number of apartment buildings to be purchased. And if we put all the constraints, so we will have this, so this uh, shape as the feasible solution region of the LP relaxation. Let's not consider the integer requirement for now. So this line is from the measures uh, measurement time constraint. This is the, the the money constraint, and this one is the, the townhouse availability constraint. So based on the discussion we had in the last class, we move we move the objective function, and we reach two extreme points. So one of the extreme points will be the optimal solution. But in this case, the B will be the optimal solution if we relax the the integer uh, requirement. But the problem is, in our problem, we have the integer requirement. So if you look at those blue dots there, so those are our feasible solutions. So we have to select some of the, maybe one or maybe more than one solution at our but if we reach, if we, if our original line is here, we have to move the line so that move the line um, into this direction so that we can find the optimal integer solution. But if we do not have this figure, how do we do that? Sometimes we can do some rounding, so that could be uh, a way to solve the problem. So, but that rounding technique may be may cause some, <coughs> but sometimes it should be fine. So in this case, so if we have a linear programming uh, model for production, so for production scheduling, so let's say uh, they want to uh, optimize how many cases of cereal they want to produce. So. Um, so the optimal solution from the linear programming relaxation is 15,132.4. Then if you run up or run down here, it's not gonna make a huge difference for the uh, to the optimal solution or the objective function. So in this case, it may be fine if you just run your solution from the LP relaxation. But in some cases, it's not gonna work. So when when do we when can we use this rounding technique? So when between variables take on small values, then on the I mean that the impact of rounding is minimum or it's really insignificant impact on the objective function, probably we can do that. But in some times if you change you, rounding will have a huge impact on objective function. In that case, you have to be careful. So in our case, so let's say this is our uh, optimal solution from the LP relaxation problem. So what if we we just directly run those solutions uh, to integer? So let's say uh, so those are the cost items. So we have the uh, solutions here. So here, see here. This is for our first option. So let's run. Uh, so let's run the t to two and let's run the a to three. Then that's our new integer solution. Then let's plug those two numbers into our objective function, and we have. I think this set of uh, solutions are within our constraint. So if you, if we recalculate the objective function value. So the new value will be 65,000. And compared to the uh, LP relaxation problem, the, the profit was 
$73,574. It's a huge difference. So if we run the, our solution to integer. So probably let's see if we got uh, if we have any other uh, option for run. Now how about three townhouses and three apartment buildings? Then the here is our objective function and we have but in this case it's not feasible. The solutions are not feasible because it's over our budget. So it requires more than three million dollars to purchase those two um, three townhouses and three apartment buildings. So it's it's not feasible. Then what else? How about two and four? So if we do the pop uh, so the calculation is uh, probably it's not feasible. It's still not feasible. So that that means if we do the running, we have to try this, try that, try that, try that. It's really hard for us to determine which one is the best. And also, if we which if we change one variable by one unit, it's going to be a huge impact to the D objective function. Because one means one building, that, that's, that's a lot of money in our cash flow or the cost. So, in that case, we cannot find the optimal solution. So, in our case, we have to use our Excel function and we have to put our constraints for the integer, it's a variable in the Excel function when we try to solve the problem. So, when we uh, look at the geometry of the feasible region. If we go back, so something is called convex hole. So if we go back there, the dashed line, so the, the whole dashed line will form a convex hole. Instead of searching this, this region, we will, so the, the algorithm will search the convex hole. So they will find uh, the optimal solution from this convex hole instead of searching the, the, the L, LP realization uh, feasible region. So let's see how we can find uh, the optimal solution. So let's, uh, let's just open Excel file, which is called uh, Formula. So let's open the Excel file. So if you have not downloaded that one, Please download it from the Facebook. So it's for us. So that's the Excel file. So in this file, in this uh, worksheet, some numbers are populated, some are not. So here the, the values, the price, the purchase costs are listed, the management time are listed, and the cash flows are listed. And also we have some um, uh, budget constraints, we have the management constraint, and then we have, have the availability of the number of townhouses. So those numbers are given to us, but when we do the modeling, so here are some things I need you guys to complete. So the highlighted areas you have to uh, populate. So let's, so the purchase plan, those two things, those two numbers are our decision variable. We want to determine how many townhouses, how many apartment buildings we need to purchase. Here, you need to put your, put in your uh, objective function. So that's uh, not, the cash flow, so you are going to enter your objective function here. And there, you need to enter your constraint. So one constraint is for the budget, second is for the management time, and the last one is for the townhouse availability. So how about based on, let me go back to the, to the formula slides. Uh, I will show you, show you the formula slide and you can work on the uh, Excel file. So that's the model. Let me check that. So let's make sure that uh, let's maximize. So how about let's push this model into your Excel file. A 
objective function and can string put this model into your Excel file. So that uh, let's have like five minutes to do that. Then we will solve uh, that that model. budgets depending on how many apartments, how many townhouses I'm going to purchase. So it's equal to the purchase cost of townhouse times the number of townhouses I want to purchase. So that's my investment in townhouse. Plus the price of apartment building, which is 400000 times how many apartment buildings Variable workplace. I want. I want to put the, the number of uh, uh, sorry, the apartment building building. management time 
you have to enter your objective function. So if you, you are already done with this modeling, please try to solve this problem. So just like what we did in the last class, let's use the solver in embedded in the, in the Excel. So after you open the solver, try to put the constraints and objective functions into that uh, window. So please uh, be careful with the objectives. It's, 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 it's to maximize the objective function instead of the minimize it. Let's solve this problem. Let's uh, go to and the data. And I think I have to add this one. So if you already have, so if you on your Excel, if you have the solver, please try to uh, solve this one using the solver. I have to attend the help point. Let's see the help over here.
left-hand side of the, of the uh, inequality, so you do like this column, and on the other the other side is the is this column. Is it must be a single Let me do this constraint one more time. How about let's uh, let's think about how how do we add that constraint? This is your additive here. So we have we have one more constraint to add. So we have to make sure all these variables are in here. So let's add one more. So we have to make sure our these variables. Select our different variables, those two, and change it to equal statement, and just let's type in English in here. In here. So, so is that wrong for nothing?
figure out this problem uh, after the class. Probably some setting problem, but you need to make sure when you when you do this integer linear programming, you have to put the integer constraint in. Okay? So let me so after class, let me figure out. Uh, Then you select the fin flag LP, and one more thing I want to uh, emphasize is mm. so when you start this uh, integer linear programming, so if you click the let me go from start, so if you click this options, so you have to make sure this integer optimality is zero percent. You have to make sure it's zero entering. I think the default value is zero, but um, before you solve the problem, you have to make sure it's zero. So that's how we do this integer uh, programming Although we didn't, uh, we were not able to implement that. Uh, but probably uh, next week Wednesday we we won't have uh, enough time to do that. So next week we will uh, after I figure out that problem, we will do with it. But please save your file. Please save your file because you want to give your model in there. For the uh, for the integer linear programming, it's the sensitivity analysis. I think we kind of covered that in the previous discussion because when we do this integer linear programming, the result sometimes the result is really sensitive. So if you change a small amount of your coefficient, it may give you a totally different set of uh, uh, optimal solution. So we have to be careful when we do the uh, sensitivity analysis. And the one more application is the text of budgeting problem. So just in case uh, you have a few projects that you wanna uh, you wanna invest, how do we model this kind of problem? So let's open a file called I think it's ice it's called ice code. of multiple projects. So that's our 
given information. Here are our design variables. Here are our design variables. We have four projects, so we have those are our design variables. But the value of the design variables is a little bit tricky. So that's binary variable. So if you want to invest in this plant expansion, value is 1. If you do not want to do this project, it's going to be zero. You only have two values. Same thing for the warehouse expansion, new machinery purchase, and new production research. So what you want to do is to, to optimize your design variables in order to maximize your nice present value. So that's our that's our objective function. We want to maximize our profits or cash flow, whatever it is. You see variables, and we have the objective function. Then we need to populate our constraint. So right now we only have one kind of constraint, which is uh, the budget constraint. So every year. I don't care how many products you want to invest, but every year you have to be within the budget constraint. So let's make sure all the investments for each year will be within Modeling. So P, let's define the design variables. P means the plant expansion project. If you select, if you want to do that, the value is one, otherwise it's zero. Same thing for the W warehouse expansion. If you want to work on it, it's one. If you want to work out, work on it, you have to invest <coughs> in this project every year. Otherwise, it's gonna be zero. The same thing for other projects. N has this problem has four constraints, and that's the country, budget country for each of the year. And here's our model. We want to maximize our cash flow or profit or our return. So if we go back to the table, for each product there's a return. So if you, you want to do the planned expansion, so if you want to invest in that, so that will give us a return of $90,000. And same thing for the warehouse expansion, buy new machines and research. So that's our objective function. We want to maximize this one. Then in terms of constraints, we have four years. For the first year, the budget has to be within the constraints. So that's the, our resource or budget constraints. But one more thing is that, so this is our special constraint. So all the design variables can only be two values. Zero or one. So that's our whole model. That's our whole model. So how about let's use the rest of the time of this class to populate this spreadsheet. Let's populate, let's give the objective function, let's give the uh, budget constraint.
Why would it say value? What is that? Yeah. 